the deliberative subjunctive asks a question. And of course, what you're going to look for is in addition to a subjunctive verb, you're going to look for a question mark. This is a question Pilate asks. Shall I crucify your king? And of course, the clue that you're dealing with a subjunctive verb here. You've got the length and omega is, is just before the tense sign there. The clue, what's he talking about? Is he talking about, shall I continuously crucify your king? No. That sigma is clue that you're dealing with the aorist. Outside of the indicative mood, there's no augments. So what you're only going to find, this clue that you're dealing with the aorist tense, is either one or two things. Either there's going to be a tense sign, like this sigma, or it's going to be so distorted that you will not be able to tell what the original stem is. That second aorist. Okay? So those are going to be your clues. But again, see the, see the nuance here. He's talking about potential action. That's what makes it subjunctive. And it's, he's talking about a generally a, a, a one-time completion, a completed action. The subjunctive of emphatic negation is when you want to say something is not only is it not going to happen, it's not ever, no, never. <laughs> going to happen. And to do that in Greek, a popular way is to use the negation particle, may, plus a subjunctive of the verb. And again, outside of the indicative mood, you're going to use may as a negator instead of oo or ook. And so you've got, and, and then you've got this, the, this form of the verb. Again, you've got the clues that that make this an, an aorist, uh, makes this an aorist subjunctive right here. The length and vowel, and the tense sign. But also another clue here. The, uh, the dictionary form of this verb is parerkamai, a combination of para and erkamai. Oh, that's the par. That means there's some messing up that's going on here, right? And so that's your clue. The fact that the, the stem appears to have been altered. That's a second aorist. Question? All right. Subjunctive of prohibition. When you're basically, um, it's a negative command, a prohibition. Um, Matthew 6.34, Jesus says, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow. That word worry or be anxious, merimnao. This is the, the subjunctive form of it. Merimnasate. So it's Greek like Hebrew in that all negative commands are done in something other than an imperative? I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that I could answer yes or to that or not. But it, uh, there are lots of examples of negative commands that are not okay. imperative.
Looking on to subjunctive in the subordinate or dependent clauses, we see uh, some other uses of the word, and this is a very interesting one. And it draws on both the present and the aorist forms of one particular word, and that's what makes it interesting as well. This is uh, John 10, 38. Jesus says, that you may know gnote, aorist tense, and understand gnoskete, that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. These are both forms of the same verb, gnosko, aorist and present tense. The best our translators can come up with is by using two different words for know, <laughs> that you may know and understand. But what Jesus is getting at here is that difference in kind of action, that is the difference between a, an aorist and a present. And again, it's not time specifically, but it's more the question of that you may know and that you may uh, continue to know. But that you may know it for sure as an established fact and that you may know it as a present experience. Mm -hmm. That was, seems to be what Jesus is getting at there. Of course, it's hard to put that all into a single translation so we so usually much. opt out of what's <laughs> easy to translate. But very interesting use of the pur purpose clause there. And again, uh, your clue here, just like in the infinitive, you've got this henna. This in order that conjunction is going to help you um, figure out that you're that this uh, what's coming next is the purpose for what came before. So the aorist would then like the simple action. So and you could say that it's no as an established fact sort of thing. Well, yeah. It, it, so there's a once-off sort of simple. So like heat knowledge versus mm. that would mean. versus experience. It seems to be what he's getting at there. Yeah, he is drawing a distinction between these two kinds of knowing, and they're both the same.